for more on all this and what it means for maybe the next president. Uh, Eleanor Clift, political columnist for the Daily Beast uh, here. Good to see you again, Eleanor. Um, help us out. How big of a, I guess, symbolic it is that Trump will be speaking shortly, but Ron DeSantis, who many think will likely announce his run for a presidency, is, is not speaking. Well, CPAC has become Trump country. There are a lot of people wearing MAGA hats, and they're cheering the president on, and they believe that he was uh, truly elected in 2020, and they're not all that happy to see other candidates challenging him for an office that they believe is rightfully his. So um, the straw poll that will come out with, is an ind index of the ratings for the various Republican candidates. Trump will dominate everything, but um, I don't think there's a whole lot to read into this unless there is some lessening of support in, in this group, and I really doubt that's the case. Uh, the real action starts once uh, the former president and his uh, strongest uh, would-be successor, the governor of Florida, once they start engaging, because the, the um, it, it, the interest in the Republican Party is for a strong man, maybe a strong woman, but mostly a strong man, <laughs> uh, who, would have, who would have Trump's policies, but without uh, the kind of... Well, we, we, we do have a strong woman, Nikki Haley. A lot of people are watching her very closely. She, she comes across as a more moderate version, at least for the Republican Party, and she's saying the right things. I think her reception was uh, good from the video that I saw. I, I'm curious, do you think that she has a realistic shot of getting the, the nomination, and what does she need to do to increase her poll numbers? Right. Um, she's trying to walk a very fine line between distancing herself from Trump, and she's doing that generationally. She's in her early 50s. He's in his mid-70s. Uh, but in terms of policies, she hasn't separated herself at all. And that might be a good thing, but uh, voters, if you give, have a choice between the real deal with Donald Trump, would you then take uh, but but he, 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 here's the thing on policy is whether it's you're a Democrat or Republican early on in the primaries I don't recall much policy from any candidates for that matter isn't it more simplistic as really just a, a likability and a and a trust factor with the individual well, that you would like to be the next president well I think that's important but I think where they are ideologically or policy wise is also important the media, we like to separate them into lanes. There's, there's the Trump lane, there's the anti-Trump lane, and a strong anti-Trumper has not yet emerged. And then there are all the would-be uh, candidates who are sticking kind of close to Trump but offering a right. little something different. Let, and let's... Haley in that with the I, I, I want to ask you a question about Trump because a lot of experts that I've, I've listened to has said that he is a, a different kind of Trump and then of course some folks say he's the same Trump and I'm curious in your opinion um, being an expert in this do, do you think he's the same Trump that we remember from four years ago well he won in 2016 as an underdog you know championing against the, the establishment Republicans and Democrats and he's running again as the underdog. But if you're a former president, are you really an underdog? And uh, people who you know watched him in person say that he doesn't have the fire in the belly that he once had. But the speech that he will deliver at CPAC is estimated to be 90 minutes long. He he likes to, to take the stage for that long, and then he often sort of. Uh, ends up griping about how the election was stolen from him and carrying out various grievances he had. The voters are tired of that. They want to hear, what are you going to do for me next? So, and so I, let's see if he can do that uh, tonight. The, the, I the, the 90 minutes would be then the same Trump. And then, of course, the other elephant in the room is uh, Governor Ron DeSantis, who Trump actually helped get into office in Florida and now is a potential, I guess, competitor. What are your thoughts on Ron DeSantis's uh, viability as a presidential candidate should he decide to to announce, which everyone's expecting? Well, well, he's running, if you can believe it, to the right of Trump. 
and he's running really solely on culture issues, that he's tougher on, you know, schools and teachers, and he's, you know, tougher on the, the woke culture. And Trump is going after him because he's remembering when DeSantis was a member of Congress, he was a founding member of the Freedom Caucus, which, which is the far-right uh, uh, caucus on the Republican side. And he came out for cutting Social Security and Medicare. And uh, voters, voters don't like that, no matter what party they're in, no matter how old they are. And so I think you're going to see Trump really uh, you know, go after him on that particular policy ground. And DeSantis is running, again, solely on cultural issues, which may suit Republican primary voters, but I don't think they make for a very good general election appeal. So, I mean, I vacillate between thinking <laughs> He's, he's the likely uh, we, uh, inheritor of the mantle here, and then thinking that he, you know, he's kind of Trump without the charm. He has yeah. doesn't have a lot of personality. Well, he Eleanor, a, we, so we, <laughs> it, it, it's a long road ahead, and uh, next time we'll talk a little bit about Biden. But I appreciate your thoughts on this. Uh, very interesting to see how uh, this is all sort of coming about. There's a lot of time still I, left. Thank you. I appreciate your questions. <laughs>